Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're doing a solo overnight in an ultralight tree tent. So stick around, we have an outstanding show coming up. High of 65 today, low of 35. And the flag in America is still waving. Another outstanding day. Um, not a cloud in the sky. That sounds great, but it's actually difficult for filming because of all the glare, but we'll work around it. Today I'm excited. I found an ultralight tree tent. Now, I stress the word ultralight. This is gonna be their version of ultralight. Most tree tents are around nine to 10 pounds, but they look cool. They're badass, you're suspended, you're basically like in a hammock with no sag, but you're in a tent, you're off the ground. It's like, I'm in the Ewok village. Um, I'm excited. I've looked forward to this for a long time. Now again, we're saying ultralight or their version of ultralight. This system combined is right around four pounds. Before someone freaks out, think about that. Most hammock setups, including under quilts, over quilts, rain flyer, tarp, and the hammock itself with straps is around two and a half to three and a half pounds, sometimes four pounds. Um, a lot of tents that I've shown on my channel two and a half to four pounds. So we're still in that weight ratio right there. And the best part of this is I can pack it inside of a medium Savota. So for me, it fits both my requirements. Lightweight, under four pounds, and packable. Let's go ahead and get out here, find a location, and get set up. Now the biggest challenge you're gonna have is finding three trees. You want three points of contact, like a triangle. So looking at this right here, I have one, two, and three. All right, in addition to those three perfectly spaced trees, which are gonna be difficult to find, trust me, let's talk about site selection. We're talking about the five W's. First one is water. I wanna be close enough to a water source so I can go down and collect that water and disinfect it by boiling or chemicals, but I don't wanna be close enough to the point where if a flash flood comes through there, I become compromised. Something to think about. The next one is wood. I want to be close enough to a wood source, meaning deadfall, that I could easily collect and cut and use for firewood. The next one would be wind. Preferably you want your shelter out of the wind. We're going to be inside of an enclosed tent, a tree tent, so I'm not going to worry about the wind. The next one is widowmakers. Now there's two types of widowmakers. One is a dead standing tree that could fall on you and crush you in the night, or if you do an overhead check, it could be a branch that fell off of one tree and somehow perfectly landed in the crotch or a Y branch of another tree and just dangling there, waiting for you to walk underneath it. The last one, and one of the most important ones, is wildlife. Some places where you go, there's bear scat. Probably not a good idea to camp there. Um, another one is wigglies. Wildlife and wigglies. Ant piles, um, scorpions, things like that. In other words, have situational awareness. If you see some type of animal trails, animal scat, insects, Hornet's nests, stay away. That blue color again. Wah, wah, wah. There's our front and there's our back.
And that, boys and girls, is the Half Windsor with a quick release. Now for the real test. So far so good. Get into the old turd Ferguson. Maybe. It's looking all futuristic like a spaceship, just saying. All right, let's talk about some of the key features. First off, it's a one-man tent with a rating of 485 pounds. Next, we have the ratchet system. It's rated for 2,500 pounds. That's pretty good to go with all that nylon webbing on there. Next, we have a breathable mesh screen or bug netting that goes all the way around it. It can be unzipped, offering a full 360 view, and then finally rolled up with a toggle system. Moving on to the inside, it is not like Doctor Who's TARDIS. It's not bigger on the inside. In fact, where your feet go, it actually tapers down, and I'm not liking that. However, I could try and make it work. At the front, at each corner, we have two breathable mesh bags. At the top, there's two loops where you can hang a lantern. Nice. And last but not least, we have a waterproof rainfly.
check it out. I promise you guys tips and tricks. Last video, we went ahead and collected water at the secret pond or selfish pond. Then we boiled that water to make it safe. We disinfected it by boiling. Disinfecting the water by boiling is the number one way for the CDC to kill or render inert viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and parasites. So what if you don't want to boil or you can't boil the water? You're going to default to chemical disinfection. And the two chemicals I want to talk about today are sodium hypochlorite or household bleach and tincture of iodine 2%. All right, so let's go ahead and kick this off with the iodine or tincture of iodine 2%. Per the website that I gave you earlier, it's five to 10 drops per US quart, depending on the clarity of the water. Now, there's a whole thing about, well, what's considered dirty, what's considered clean? Is it swamp water? Is it stagnant water? Go to the website and read it. I'm telling you, per the website, five to 10 drops per US quart. Once you get the five drops in there for clear water, 10 drops for swamp water, go ahead and put the lid back on and wait 30 minutes. Once that 30 minutes is up, you go ahead and crack that lid, dribble across the threads, and you're good to go. All right, moving on to the last one. Everybody's favorite controversial way to disinfect water. Sodium hypochlorite, 6% and above, or household bleach, preferably Clorox, unscented. Now, once again, people are gonna lose their minds and say, you're gonna poison somebody. Go to the website and read all about it. Educate yourself, educate others. Now, the method for disinfection with sodium hypochlorite, 6% and above, is two to four drops per US quart. You wait 30 minutes, once again, crack the lid, dribble across the threads, and you're good to go. Two drops or four drops, depending on the water clarity. So all we've done here is we went ahead and grabbed a piece of paracord and placed it inside of a cap full of bleach. The paracord will actually absorb the bleach, creating an improvised eyedropper. keeping my whites wider. And there you have it, simple and straightforward. I challenge everybody to check out that website, Backcountry Water Treatment. Google it, you're gonna be amazed. It's gonna explain everything I just told you in greater detail and give you other options as well. Now, in no way am I telling you, bring bleach to the field or only rely on tincture of iodine 2%. I'm gonna tell you, rely on boiling the water for disinfection first time, every time. If you can't or choose not to, or you're in some urban dwelling or urban scenario, the other two means I just showed you are just as effective. I spy with my corporal eye something that begins with R. You know, I probably made about a dozen of these so far for my videos, at least 20 over a 12 year period. You need to start like selling these or something on my Amazon influencer page. Burn a couple of corporal chevrons on this or sign it or something, or like just spit on it or something and toss it on there. 100 bucks, easy, right there. Ghetto rakes, corporal style.
All right, the coals are burnt down, and that's outstanding. You know why? Because it's time for chow. And I'm thinking double bacon pizza. So all I did here was to grab two logs, and I cut them, and put foil all the way around it. It creates a grill. Putting foil over top of it creates an oven. Dude, I just added that crushed red pepper to this. Mm. Domino's ain't got nothing on me. Corporal the pizza guy. Corporal's pizza. Oh man. Double bacon. Mozzarella cheese. Crushed red pepper. That marinara sauce. Mm. Need some garlic dipping sauce right now. Mm. Little Caesars, Domino's, Pizza Hut, Giovanni's, Papa Murphy's, Papa John's. Kiss my butt. Corporal's is open 24 7. Man, this is outstanding. Mm -mm. Not too burned on the bottom. Crunchy yet chewy. Love it when a plan comes together. I'm gonna stand here, be nasty, finish my meal. We'll get that fire going. And have a campfire chat. Mm -mm. Corporal's Corner Pizza, baby. Oh. Gonna be a nice night, boys and girls. Nice night. Supposed to get down to 35, but I highly doubt it. All right, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, there's a cow. There's one cow, and it wandered in. I'm currently on 4,000 plus acres, and every once in a while a cow wanders in. People lose their minds and go, he's camping on a farm. Old McCorporal had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Wrong. I'm not on a farm, but there's plenty of pasture and grazing area way over there. Just like you'll hear an occasional vehicle. There's an old furnace road and an access road over there as well, and sound carries. I've been three miles out, and I'm still going to hear the vehicles. I apologize for that. There's nothing I can do. Especially right now, with the current crisis, I gotta find land where I can find it. Man, that pizza was outstanding. If I were to fall asleep just sitting here, and just be like... See if I can make it. Alright, um... 
Next order of business, logos. I promise I keep you guys up to date. Um, I have two that I like from a company and the world ended. So right now we're on hold. Same with the 250K subscriber giveaway. I'm probably gonna announce that next week or two just to get over with it, just to be, be done. I'm, I wanna be done with it. But I can't ship and if it's an overseas winner, I'm definitely not gonna be able to ship for a while. So you're gonna have to be patient on that. I'll announce the winners, but until I get back in California, uh, which I'm currently not there. Um, all the items are there, so I'll announce the winners, and you guys can just got to be patient. That's all I can do. There will not be a separate video. I will do an overnighter like this, and I'll announce the winners. So look for that in the upcoming weeks. I promise you I'm going to get it done. Um, again, there's no channel of the week because I don't want anybody running out there trying to make videos and trying to get out there and, you know, hoping that they get, you know, an extra couple hundred subs or whatever and risking, you know, contracting something. Um, I, I don't want that. Um, so once we're through all of this bad stuff, I'll start doing the channel of the week again. However, with that said, the channels I've already mentioned, I'll mention them again, um, Salty Dog Outdoors. We have Gray Bearded Green Beret. We have Cold Cracker Bushcraft. We have Bomb Proof Bushcraft. Let's see who else we have. We have Endurance Room. That was a good one as well. Who else am I missing here? Black Hat Bushcraft. Blackie Thomas. So check out those channels and continue feeding them subs and views because they're all good to go. And I know for a fact that they're all making videos during this crisis. So check them out. Let's talk about this tree tent right now. And I'll be honest, it's no Ewok village. Um, there were a couple of them I was told about earlier today where I guess it was like 10 foot up in the trees and the center was open with a hole and had a ladder that came down. Um, if you all got one of those, talk to me. Um, that's what I'm looking for. This here is kind of like a hammock without as much sag. It's kind of bouncy like a trampoline, you know? I mean, I'm digging it. It's cool. Wrong colors, of course. Um, but, I mean, we'll find out tonight. I just don't like that foot box taper or the colors. So, other than that, I mean, it's, it's cool. Um, got my climate insulated uh, blow up pad inside here with my pillow and a wool blanket and I should be good to go. I think the plan for the rest of the night would be toss some wood on that fire, relax, rack ops, and then uh, coffee experiment tomorrow. Let's see what we have. The last thing I want to say, and I said it last time, was thank you to all my new subs. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Um, we're hitting month number four now of all these overnighters, and it's really made a difference in my channel. I think it's made a difference in people as well. I got several emails, people telling me that they're getting outside, they're looking into online classes, they're starting to entertain or check out those things that they were talking about doing as far as hobbies or bettering themselves or making themselves a better person or making somebody else's life better. Um, you know, they're starting to work of their life. And it was kind of cool to see that feedback. It meant a lot to me. Ultimately, it should mean a lot to you because you're the one doing it. Take that first step and the next one's going to be a thousand times easier. Boom. 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 And then six months to a year, two years, three years, you're doing the work of your life. And they say that, you know, you get a job like that, you'll never think of it as a job again because you'll never do any work. I always hear the stuff like, oh, if you work for yourself, you're going to work the hardest you've ever worked. Well, that's true to a point. But to me, I hear the word work and I cringe because I know what it is for me. I know, I know what that hell is, you know. So I don't want to look at this like work. I want to look at it like I'm having fun to be in the woods. And for the first time in 20 years since I got out of the Marine Corps, I'm doing something that I enjoy and that I don't feel is beneath me, if that makes sense. 
<sighs> it's a nice fire. I'm gonna sit here and enjoy my fire. Catch you all in the morning. It was a nice night. <sighs> Coffee time. Corporal's cup of tea in the morning. Ah, uh, wrong. Seventeen seventy three, baby. Hashtag America. Corporal's cup of coffee in the morning, take two. Hmm. Much better. Let's go ahead and talk about that tree tent. Like I've said three times, not the Ewok village. Not a tent either. But how does it compare to a hammock? That's the real question. Sleeping, I actually felt a little bit better. A little bit more room at the shoulder area. Wasn't confined, you know, like wrapped up in a hammock. But for the price of that, around $199, you can buy a nice hammock setup with an overquilt or at least a nice rain fly or tarp and have a lot less hassle. I just feel like there's too many straps and bells and whistles and you gotta tie half Windsor knots with quick release. There's carabiners on that thing. Separate bags. Um, colors suck. But, I mean, was it still fun? Heck yeah. Something different, something new? Sure. Um, would I take that to a campground somewhere? 
would I backpack that thing? That's the real question. Even though it's set up for that and it weighs four pounds, <clears throat> probably not. But again, it was fun, good experience. Welcome back. Last night was outstanding. Excellent night in the woods, not a cloud in the sky. It got down about 35 degrees and I was smoothing it, baby. All kidding aside, it's not the Ewok Village, but it was an excellent night's sleep. Um, and if you're interested in one of those, I highly recommend getting one. $199, can't beat that price. Some of those things go for $700, $800. Bucks. Um, the last bit of advice I want to give everybody during this crisis, use this time wisely. Like I mentioned before, get out there, start the work of your life. Entertain those ideas or those hobbies or those things of interest. Change your life, change somebody else's. Most importantly, get out in the woods, practice them skills, go for a short walk, have fun doing it. As always, all the gear in my video can be found on my Amazon Influencer page or my Self-Reliance Outfitters Influencer page. Both those links will be inside my description box. Now please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time. <laughs>